I mean, I can see where people like Jeannie are coming from, because what they're doing is they, they know that there are pastors and preachers who are telling their flock evolution and God are completely incompatible, therefore since you believe in God, you obviously, we, we, we can't tolerate evolution. Yeah. Now, she wants to say, no, 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 you can join us, uh, you can go on believing in God, it's fine. Uh, right. You can go on having your God, there's no incompatibility with e evolution at all. Um, whereas, my approach is that I think that's only one skirmish in a larger war. Well, I don't have to address that as a philosophical question. I can address that as an empirical question. It's obvious that it is, because there are many people who are scientists who are also people of faith. There are many theologians uh, whose job it is, whose life it is to think about religious issues, who are enthusiastic uh, acceptors and supporters of science and who, who are, are excited by the things that scientists discover. So it's empirically obvious that, that there's no necessary conflict between science and religion. The, the point about the, the, pa the pastors and, pr and preachers who have taught their flock that there is an incompatibility between evolution and, uh, and, and God. And Jeannie will, will, will try to dispel that and say, no, no, there's no, it's fine, you can, you can have both. I'm not sure that a better tactic isn't the exact opposite. I mean, if they've already been told that <laughs> there's an incompatibility between religion and evolution, well, let's tell them that, let's convince them of evolution and we're, and we're there. Because I think the whole intelligent design controversy is very important for a couple of reasons. It reminds us of the importance of keeping the door of science open to theists. I'll talk a little bit later on about the cultural renewal part of intelligent design and the motivation for this anti-evolution position. Largely is the idea that science means God had nothing to do with it. And the intelligent design people believe that evolution is a totally materialist phenomenon. God can have nothing to do with it. And when a high school teacher teaches evolution, the high school teacher is telling the students to take their God and shove it. It's not happening. But I think we need to be reminded that we should be sure that when we teach evolution, whether at the college level or the high school level, that we be sure to not present it in a way that limits the ability of a student who is religious to accommodate his or her religious views to the science we are presenting. If, if, if we could take somebody who's been from, from the cradle up, has been brainwashed into believing that there's an incompatibility, now you take that person and give him some tutorials and, and actually show him the facts and mm -hmm. if you show, show them the facts, they can't come away not really understanding it. If you, if you pay enough attention to it. Now, whereas if they've been pre-trained pre by somebody like a bishop, who, who says, oh, there's no incompatibility, evolution is yes. God's way of doing things, then there won't be a problem. But if, if they've got it firmly entrenched in their heads that there is an incom incompatibility, then in a sense we've got an easier task right. if we want to kill religion. And in science, this is a methodology. We restrict ourselves to natural cause. Science is a limited way of knowing, I like to tell people. We are limited to explaining just the natural world. We're not telling you how to treat each other, morals and ethics. We're just trying to explain the natural world. And we limit ourselves to natural cause. The reason we limit ourselves to natural cause, to methodological naturalism, is not because all scientists are atheists, because they aren't. The reason we limit ourselves to natural cause is because the essence of science is testing ideas against the natural world. I think she's soft on religion. She is, of course, not religious herself, though she'll hate me for saying it. She's too intelligent and well-informed to be religious. But she respects religion in a way that I do not. I can imagine good tactical reasons for pretending to respect religion, but to pretend to respect religion is different from really respecting religion, which is the one place I cannot go with Dr. Scott. But as my friend Robert Pennock said, another Michigan um, a scholar, to say nothing of God is not to say that God is nothing. When we talk about cell division in biology, we don't say, you know, here are the enzymes that cause the chromosomes to line up in the midline, and God had nothing to do with it. 
and here are the enzymes that form the spindle fibers and God had nothing to do with it and here are the enzymes that make the cell break apart and God had nothing to do with it of course not when we talk about evolution we talk about the phylogenies we talk about the tree of life we talk about how bears and dogs had a common ancestor in the Miocene we're not saying and God had nothing to do with it because we don't talk about God acting or not acting when we're wearing our scientist hat if as a religious individual you want to believe that God wanted bears and dogs to emerge out of a common ancestor there's nothing in science that's going to say you can't say that but there's nothing in science that you can use to test that either and it's not a scientific idea because it's not testable okay that's methodological materialism or methodological naturalism there's also something called philosophical materialism this is a philosophical view not a scientific view that says matter and energy is it folks there is no God there are no ancestor spirits there's no uh, supernatural whatsoever matter energy and their interactions is all that the universe is composed of this is a philosophical view it's held by a lot of people but it is not a view that is compelled by science okay I happen to hold that view but I can't say that science proves that point of view I have to say I hold that view because of my own particular background and what I think about reality but a theist can use can look at the same empirical evidence that I look at and given his particular philosophical view see the hand of God and so forth I don't science is an equal opportunity substratum for philosophy okay it does not compel either theism or disbelief or, or philosophical materialism but there are a lot of scientists around who kind of get this mixed up and the creationists love to quote these folks uh, Richard Dawkins uh, um, uh, Dennett uh, William Provine uh, I'll give you an example from a Scientific American article by a friend of mine uh, Michael Shermer who wrote he was talking about the Gallup poll a paltry 12 percent accept the standard scientific theory that human beings have developed over millions of years from less advanced forms of life but God had no part in this process excuse me when did that become part of the standard scientific theory the standard scientific theory is that evolution happened that living things shared common ancestors the standard scientific theory is that living things descended with modification from common ancestors full stop period if you believe God guided the process that's fine that's a theological belief if you believe God had nothing to do with the process that's fine that's a philosophical belief neither are compelled by the scientific data Michael is simply wrong when he says this and the other scientists who make similar statements simply have not thought this through yeah.